Hi, welcome. Today I am delighted to introduce you to Sarah De Kish. She is Director of Policy and Partnerships at International Cocoa Initiative. She has solid experience working with stakeholder engagement as well as business and human rights. With her, we will be discussing about the importance of having a trustworthy relationship with the stakeholders. And I'm sure that you will like this interview. Please stay with us and welcome. Hey, Sarah. Good morning. How good are morning. you? Doing? Good. And you? Good. Good to see you. It's a really a pleasure to, to have this little talk with you about the stakeholder engagement. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm sure our students will appreciate it, uh, all the experience that you have in this field. Uh, so if you are ready, I start shooting questions. Let's go, let's shoot. <laughs> so, well, um, I've been reading that uh, some studies that mentioned that uh, like 80% of the executives will consider that having a good relation with the stakeholders has uh, helped them to modify their objectives to get more into the uh, long term and because that helps them to to strengthen let's say the value of the organization so my question to you is how will you define value it's yeah <laughs> um well, value um, as such, so if you take, uh, if you look at what the dic dictionary says about uh, value. Very good. Uh, well, it has different aspects. So it's, um, uh, first of all, the amount of money that can be received for something. Uh -huh. And therefore, um, the estimation uh, of the importance or worth of something, it could be also someone although we don't receive money for someone normally, uh, and also the estimation of how useful or important something is for someone. So in a business uh, context, um, the value of a company as such is understood strictly, uh, usually as its market value. Okay. So how much the company is worth on the market if you would sell it, uh, how much uh, investors would be uh, ready to, to give for it. Um, now, the purpose of a business is to serve the values of the owner, but so it's to create value for the owner, but not only. So the purpose uh, of a business is to create value for the, I think, the entire ecosystem involved uh, and impacted. So both involved and impacted by the company. So um, it's investors, but of course also it's customers and it's employees and the workers. Um, so these uh, are intrinsically uh, linked to, um, to the functioning and the interest uh, of the company. Um, voilà. And uh, I also think that the responsibility or the social responsibility of a company is to create value for not only uh, its own, but also its external uh, stakeholders. Okay, but and then what does it uh, what does it mean for a company? Why do they need to to show to the stakeholders the value they are creating? Um, yeah, so here we indeed um, mention stakeholders. So let's again maybe define what is understood uh, by stakeholders, because okay. here as well there are different uh, dimensions, um, and who are the com a company stakeholders? So first of all, the definition or of a stakeholder. So a stakeholder is understood or is defined as someone that has an interest in a company um, that can either affect or be affected uh, by a company's operations or performance, uh, for example. Uh, and these stakeholders of a company can be either internal or external. So a company has two kinds of uh, stakeholders. So internal uh, stakeholders uh, are people whose interest in a company comes uh, from a direct relationship to the company. For example, employees mm -hmm. um, or owners, investors, etc. Um, and these stakeholders are important to a company uh, and to a business um, yeah, operations because 
uh, the business relies on their ability to work together. So that's one kind of stakeholders. And the other stakeholders are the external stakeholders. So these are those who are not directly linked or don't directly work with the company, but are affected by its actions or outcomes. Mm -hmm. So it could be communities, it could be public uh, groups, it could be creditors, etc. Um, and they can be affected, but they can also affect a company's functioning. Um, okay. So there is uh, this uh, correlation all the time, which make me bring to the next question because we also know well you know better than i do how it's uh, very important to create this trust relationship with the stakeholders mm -hmm. uh, and again here i think it's uh, there is a need for definition because maybe we get lost in translation mm -hmm. and not understanding what do we mean by trust so how mm -hmm. would you in this context define trust mm -hmm. um yeah, well, maybe before I go into um, the definition of trust, maybe just to come back briefly to these uh, stakeholders, which I mentioned, and you also asked why a company in the end should also um, um, involve them or show them that the value is creation. And I'm just insisting on that because I guess it, it is related to the question of trust. Um, so these stakeholder groups, which are linked directly or indirectly to the functioning, to the performance, to the impact of a company, obviously um, are involved. And this is where we come to stakeholder engagement. So a company is involving them all in a way or another. And the whole difficulty is to make them all happy. Uh, but these kind of stakeholder groups may have different aspirations, different objectives, contradictory objectives, um, etc. So um, hence the importance of engaging them and hence also the importance of um, engaging in the sense of consulting them, understanding them, um, but therefore also showing regularly that uh, their view, their role, well, that their view has been taken into account to in a to the maximum, so in the in in best possible way, um, but also that they contribute to the whole functioning of the company. And most stakeholders want to see this not only on the short term, they want long-term uh, perspectives. Mm -hmm. um, and they want to be sure or have a belief that they have a role to play and that they are heard and respected. Mm -hmm. And this is where probably then the trust aspect comes in because that's key. Um, so trust, um, how I would define trust is, um, well, it's the belief that someone has in a way into another person. So it's a sentiment of, um, of confidence, of security I, I place into someone else. Mm -hmm. uh, so for example, I trust you for this interview and that you will do something good with it, that you are not going to harm me and, and vice versa, you trust um, that, uh, uh, that we will hopefully do also the same and, and that you will get something out of me. I trust a friend uh, when I know that I can rely on this person, whatever happens. And as an employee, I trust my company or my organization if I know that um, the work I'm doing contributes to the bigger mission, that um, I am hurt and vice versa, the company would trust me if they know that I'm doing my job uh, properly and that I can be relied on. So I think um, trust it is when you can count on each other, but also when you um, know what to expect from each other. And it's probably the starting point and maybe also the end point of any relationship, because if trust is broken, you stop uh, the relationship. relationship. Yeah, well, I, this uh, correlates a little bit what I have discussed with another panelist about uh, the importance of building trust also in the supply chain mapping, because again, mm -hmm. su uh, suppliers or business partners, they also are in a way stakeholders, right? Mm -hmm. so you also need to build this trust relationship with them. But now I, I wonder in this process where companies will need to identify the different stakeholders that, as you said, they, they are interested in what the company uh, is doing. They are also affected 
they are demanding uh, things mm -hmm. for the company to do to uh, to make them happy, as you said. But in which point could could that happen? If that happened, um, that the company say, well, actually. I don't want to even discuss with these stakeholders, or let's phrase it in a different way. Are there any stakeholders where we could say they are non negotiable for me? I don't want to discuss with them. I don't want to engage with them. Mm -hmm. um, yes, they could, uh, although here also maybe different um, dimensions. Um, one may be directly linked to what you mentioned. You mentioned the, the example of suppliers which are also a company stakeholders so here a company could um, actually has the power to engage or disengage with certain stakeholders so typically a company would have a certain amount of expectations which they put on the stakeholder or on the sorry on the supplier and the supplier has in most of the cases not much choice than just um, accepting it and delivering to it. And if they don't deliver upon the required quality or speed, then the company can disengage from this uh, supplier, which is not necessarily a good thing. I think if you have no other choice, yeah, but it is very important, uh, I think, to in order also to build uh, trust yeah. in, a, uh, in a sustainable way. Um, that um, you have a bilateral um, sort of relationship also with your supplier that it's not only imposed top down but that it goes the other way um, both ways around the other example i wanted to give is um, ngos for example which can be critical to companies they can criticize companies for harming the environment for harming the society for not doing enough so uh, it would be a natural for a company to not really be very uh, keen to engage with them. It's like when you have someone on the street shouting at you, you're not that much uh, interested in going to talk to this person. However, um, being able to talk to people who have a different opinion, who have a different view that can be although going yeah, against uh, your own perception is very important again to build trust in the society and to make sure that your company evolves taking into account the different dynamics in in the society yeah. right now where you put the limit indeed it might be uh, counterproductive to some extent to um, engage too closely with those stakeholders that are really at the opposite of your values um, because it may backfire and it might not be really um, uh, well uh, relevant. Relevant at the end. Okay, no, good. Although I, um, here in what we are discussing after now, I actually wonder if there are ways to measure with KPIs the the impact that one could have in stakeholder engagement. Mm. from your experience is it that possible at all or do we need to get into more soft kind of uh, measurement that's a good question and i'm not sure that my answer here is very accurate okay um so on the one hand i think it's important to define objectives of what you want to achieve with your stakeholders first defining who the stakeholders are you need to approach to categorize them and to define an objective which each each of them and also a tactic to achieve that now um it, it remains and so for certain elements it might be more easy to define kpis um, um voilà. so uh, i don't know if i take the example of coca-cola they mm -hmm. kpi was to uh, find a consensus i guess with a number of ngos mm -hmm. uh, and define alternative solutions that are viable and, and ultimately also sell, serve their business um, other kind of stakeholder engagement um, outcomes might be more subjective so how do you measure the influence you have on a stakeholders and vice versa can also it's not that easy because it implies a number of more subtle tactics to yeah. go there and also um, can take very long as well right? and it can take very long yeah 
Yeah. yeah. And also sometimes the context might also either be a driver or a hurdle. Mm -hmm. So certain things might have happened anyway because just everything was pushing for it. Others uh, might prevent you and then you also need to adapt and, and be agile there. So yes and no, I would say <laughs> to that. I would answer okay. to that question. Okay. So it's a good point to keep discussing then. It's yeah. yeah. It's, uh, cool. I'm already very grateful that, uh, that you you agreed to have this interview and and uh and you know that i could be discussing with you for hours <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but um i wanted to end with a, a question that we ask to all the panelists and it's about your purse of wisdom to the students to these young professionals in the csr and sustainability environment in, in your case, I, because of this nuanced uh, environment, I phrase it in like, in one way, three tips to follow that you will recommend these uh, young professionals to follow in stakeholder engagement, to have a genuine uh, stakeholder engagement, and three traps that you should then, uh, or you should avoid. So please, the floor is yours. <laughs> um, so only three and three. Um, so maybe three tips. It's of course uh, um, talking. So the basis of stakeholder engagement is, is dialogue. And for dialogue, you need to be able to listen um, and you need to be able to discuss in both ways. That means involving also the other, the counterparty, the other uh, entity or the other person. Um, and not just imposing your view, but really engaging, involving, listening, etc. So I think that's that's very important. Um, then maybe another element is to give feedback, to report back. So once you have um, taken a decision based, or once you are, um, define certain actions on that basis, explain them, report back, show what you are doing. And maybe that's actually a link to your first question, the importance of also showing um, to your stakeholders the immediate consequences, but also the long-term consequences to give perspective and in that way also to uh, create buy-in and empower. Um, and it's maybe also to um, yeah, to plan and to define clear uh, roles and responsibilities. So what do you expect? What is your, what can the other expect from you? And what are sort of the rules of this dialogue and, and vice versa? And what common ground do you want to try to define? I think that's that's very important. Um, and maybe tr tr uh, three, three traps, well, that would be the opposite, so just trying to impose something and giving the impression that you manipulate the other stakeholders, that you are only here to take, but not to actually create a relationship mm -hmm. uh, and to find common solutions to a problem where, again, you're also listening. So only imposing, um, uh, I, I think, is not a good idea. Um, um, maybe just also engaging someone just because they are your friends. Uh, and therefore also leaving out other people is maybe also not a very good very idea. Good. Mm -hmm. And also really um, maybe another trap is, yeah, therefore also try to, well, involve all stakeholders, also the ones that you are more scared of or the ones that bother you a bit, a bit more. Uh, also approach them and don't forget to be transparent. So not being yeah. transparent and just being also focused on yourself in a short, with a short term view um, uh, is something also to avoid. This is fantastic, Sarah. I think I have learned from more from the traps than from the tips. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> very, very good traps not to okay. get into. Yeah, excellent. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I think, yeah, we, we have um, a very pleasant discussion. Uh, thank you. I'm really looking forward to, to show it to the students. Uh, I thank uh, on behalf of them already for your amazing work and uh, please keep in touch. Yes, we do. <laughs> thank you very much, Veronica, and then good luck to all the students. Thank you. Take care. Have a good day.